Hi, I'm Jamie Watson from Niantic, and I'm excited to tell you about our work, the Temporal Opportunist, Self-Supervised Multi-Frame Monocular Depth, or ManyDepth for short. ManyDepth is a new method for depth estimation, which combines the learning-based priors of monocular depth networks with the geometric reasoning of multi-view stereo to leverage the best of both worlds. This allows us to accurately predict depth for single images and a sequence of frames when available. Monocular depth estimation is the task of taking an RGB image's input and outputting a per pixel depth map. Modern methods make use of deep convolutional networks and thus require a high number of examples to train. However, obtaining accurate ground truth labels is difficult, and as such, there has been a focus on self supervised methods in the community, allowing for training from monocular video alone. Traditional deep network based monocular depth estimation approaches only make use of one frame at test time but often we actually have sequences of frames coming from a moving camera. So, how can we make use of this extra information? Some previous methods have made use of test time refinement, whereby they perform back propagation at test time to update the weights of a network. This can be slow and often makes use of future frames in the optimization. Alternatively, methods have been proposed that utilize LSTM-based recurrent networks to leverage the additional information from multiple images. However, these do not explicitly make use of geometry. Lastly, several deep multi-view stereo works have been developed for this task. However, these are generally supervised for both depth and poses and cannot handle moving objects or a static camera. In contrast, many depth is entirely self-supervised, only requiring monocular video sequences to train. Is real-time, only needing a single forward pass at test time to generate depth, works for both single frame and multi-frame input, and produces sensible estimates for a static camera and for moving objects. So how do we do it? Inspired by multi-view stereo, we build a cost volume from multiple images, keeping things real-time by avoiding expensive 3D convolutions. However, when combining a cost volume with self-supervised training from video, we encounter three key problems. First, we observe cost volume overfitting, whereby our network inherits all of the errors of the cost volume, particularly around moving objects. Second, since we are training from monocular video alone, our estimated depths and poses will be in an unknown arbitrary scale. So how can we choose sensible hypothesized depth bounds for the cost volume? And third, at test time we will encounter frames with little or no baseline, as well as frames from the start of sequences. We need to be robust to these cases. We will now address each of these in turn, starting with cost volume overfitting. Surprisingly, a multi-frame system trained with a cost volume performs significantly worse than our single frame model when trained from monocular video. So what is happening? To help us understand, let us look at this example. Notice the artifacts especially around moving objects for the multi-frame prediction. Now let us look at the argument of the cost volume, and we can immediately see that our trained network has inherited all of the mistakes of the cost volume, relying on it too much. To solve this, we propose utilizing a single image network as a teacher, enforcing consistency in regions for which the cost volume cannot be trusted identified by our motion mask seen in the bottom right. Here we can see the impact. Notice how our multi-frame network can now make sensible predictions for moving objects. Next, we will look at the scale problem. Since we are training from monocular video, our poses and depths will be in an unknown arbitrary scale. This means we cannot predefine the depth range used to build our cost volume as in standard multi-view stereo methods. To solve this, we introduce an adaptive cost volume, which learns the depth range from the data. This allows us to train the system whilst the network finds its own scaling. The final problem is that we want our network to produce plausible depth estimates for frames with a static camera or when there are no previous frames. To do so, we propose using data augmentation, randomly simulating a static camera by feeding duplicate frames into our network or by zeroing out the cost volume. In both cases, we importantly still apply the reprojection loss, teaching the network to be robust. Now, let's look at the impact of our contributions. On the left, we can see the disparity estimates of our full method, and on the right, we show the predictions made by a baseline model, which naively uses a cost volume being trained without our motion masking or our static frame augmentation. Additionally, our full method can handle cases where there is no or very little camera motion shown here. In these cases, the cost volume is unhelpful, and our baseline model produces very poor disparity estimates. In our paper, we compare to leading single-frame and multi-frame methods, demonstrating a new state-of-the-art in self-supervised depth estimation. Thank you for watching. Code and pre-trained models are available on our GitHub.